Stand back, don't get too close. Although I'm usually totally fine with hugs, I'm a hugs person. Me personal space, Sue personal space. I'm sick, I don't want you to catch anything. My intention was to publish a follow-up to last week's TIG welding video. In fact, part of me is still sitting here at the bench going on and on about aluminum waveforms or something or other. But like I said, I managed to get sick. Not to worry, I checked with my multimeter. I think I'm fine. According to the numbers, I'm pretty sure I'm gonna live, which is fortunate because I have one heck of a project ahead of me. Now that we got my full medical history out of the way, I don't have a welding follow-up video for you, but I do have some mildly exciting news. I bought a German phrase machina. That's right, another old piece of junk I have absolutely no space for. Friends, countrymen, I'd like you to meet my hoe. <clears throat> that might actually be pronounced maho, mayho, not sure, not German. This is a model MH400P, and apart from recognizing that as a jumble of letters and numbers, I have no idea what that means. I have an educated guess for what the P stands for, but I'll save that for later. Before coming across this one, I'd never heard of Maho or Mayho before, let alone the 400. Though if you're interested, there are a couple of 600s and a 700 on eBay right now. In any event, this is an older CNC mill that's seen better days. Travels by the book are 400 millimeters by 250 millimeters by 375. I know what you're thinking, because my wife asked me the same exact question. Old Tony, don't you already own a phrase machina? I most certainly do. A beautiful Schaublin 13. So you needed another one? Does a Pope mill wear a funny hat? I got this mill from the same machine dealer who sold me to Schaublin. I guess he figured he knew the perfect sucker to dump this on. The good news is I paid less than 40 cents a pound. The bad news is it weighs a lot of pounds. If all goes well, that old milling machine may replace my CNC router. I don't want to make any promises, but that's the intention. You see, the router is starting to show some wear. I guess that's what I get for buying all the cheapest import hardware I could find to put into this thing. On top of that, I've pushed it through more than its fair share of steel. I did sit down with the intention of upgrading the screws and slides and even started looking into a real spindle. When it dawned on me, even if I did all that, I'd still have a router. At that point, I figured old Tony quit screwing around and just get a CNC mill. I started window shopping, and wouldn't you know it, they're really expensive. So I'm back to screwing around. But hey, at least it's cheaper in the short term. Let's take a quick tour of the mill. I'll tell you what I really like about it, and give you a few reasons for the buyer's remorse that's eating me alive right now. What attracted me to this mill is that it's already sort of CNC, and it's not really that big. Physically, it's not that big. But it's sort of CNC, and it was cheap. It's got an old Heidenhain TNC-124, I believe. This, if I'm not mistaken, would do single axis at a time, 2.5D machining. I didn't really care, frankly, but because of that, I assumed this machine had ball screws. Which it doesn't. It has what appear to be regular trapezoidals. Which might be a problem. I won't know the whole story until I get in there and see how much space I have to work with. Second, I got this without really taking a close look at it, or as close a look as I would have liked to. I took a drive out to see it, but it was packed in behind dozens, if not more, of other metalworking machines, and I didn't really have a lot of access. Not to mention, it's completely covered in weird grime, and I didn't really want to touch it. You should count yourselves fortunate that you can't smell what this thing smells like. It's hard to put into words, but imagine, if you will, a hundred-year-old senior citizen robot with an incontinence problem. Sitting in an old adult robot diaper that really needs changing. Oh, it also didn't work. Did I even mention that? The mill as delivered didn't work. The story was it did work when they got it, but when I asked them to power it up, it blew the breakers right out of their fuse boxes. Red flag, you say? Maybe. But again, my plan was to convert this thing, so I didn't really care about electrical problems. Two things really pulled me in. First, mechanically, this thing feels great. Well, the X and Y do anyway. Z-axis, I haven't really gotten a chance to check out. It has a sheared key or something. 
or I don't know what I'm doing, I can't get this thing to budge. But check this out. I can move the table with almost zero effort using just a four millimeter Allen wrench. If my choice of X, Y, and Z axis have raised an eyebrow, I feel your pain. Not what I would usually expect. But it's got a picture on it that's hard to argue with. I guess the OEM didn't care to consider the axis shift due to the vertical head. You just called the top of this Z because the horizontal spindle bore, I guess. Second, until I got my hands on it anyway, the table and ways don't have even so much as a ding or a scratch in them. I cleaned off some small sections and from what I can see anyway, mechanically, it looks pretty darn good for its age. Backlash, at least in the center of the Y axis and the center of the table motion is less than a quarter millimeter going by the dials, but still that's like eight or nine thou. Not great for CNC, but a manual machine this old, that's pretty good. This has got to be, I don't know, late 70s maybe, early 80s. I'm not 100%. I even got the original manuals. When does that happen? Unfortunately though, it looks like all the letters got jumbled up in transit. That, and this isn't the manual for my machine. It's for an MH600. I've got mechanical drawings for the whole machine. By the machine, I mean the MH600, so I don't know how much good these will do me. But aren't these things beautiful? I bet they look even better right side up. That's the hand wheel maybe for X-axis. So again, different machine. Might get this laminated, turn it into a poster for the garage. Stamped 12 Juni 1974. Also, you know what I just learned? Like literally last night? Mayho or Maho is the M in DMG Mori. Pretty sweet, huh? I've got some pedigree on my hands. With the machine, I also got another crate that I was told was the electronics that belonged to a sister machine that was scrapped. Like they had two of the same exact machines and they gutted all the smarts before recycling the cast iron. Before I bought this and they told me about the extra crate, when I cracked the top open, the first thing I saw were these two servo motors. So I thought, sweet, this thing's got servo motors. The conversion should be pretty straightforward or, you know, more conversion friendly. But the MH400 isn't a servo machine. So I'm assuming these parts came from the same place those manuals did, from some poor MH600 before it was sent to the great machine shop in the sky. So they only just dropped this off, well, I guess two days ago now. I've only had a few hours to mess around with it. But I was curious to see if I could figure out what was wrong. I was hoping to just find a fuse or two in here. You know, something I could just stick a penny in and problem solved. And if it looks to you like someone's been in there already, well, they have. That someone was me. As soon as I got this in the door and untied, I powered it up and sure enough, blew the breaker. It left me in complete darkness. I managed to get the lights back on, dried my tears, put on some coffee and did a bunch of staring. Slowly, it started to not look so bad. Just a bunch of contactors and relays, really. There were a couple of blown fuses at the top, I just jumpered past them. They're like prehistoric ceramic fuses. I don't even know where I'd find those things anymore. A couple of contactors that needed resetting, but it started all looking not that bad. Powered it back up, popped the breakers again. Then I noticed some water in the bottom of the cabinet. Damp spots. This thing at some point got rained on. And I started to suspect this transformer. When it dawned on me that this isn't a step down transformer. I assume it took power down to run pumps or motors or the controller, I don't know. But on closer inspection, the power went in and it came right out. Maybe power conditioning, power factor, or matching, or some other word related transformers that I don't know the meaning of. So I took this completely out of the circuit. I wired right past it. Probably not the safest way to do it, but there you have it. And just like that, the mill powered up. Now I had mixed feelings when that happened. I mean, first I was excited, elated, but also kind of worried, suspicious. I just jumpered past arguably the largest component in the electrical cabinet and the machine turned on. I mean, I'm no electrolysist, but I don't think you throw in stuff like that just for kicks. Consequently, I've been very cautious about touching this thing while it's powered up. And again, in the long term, it doesn't really matter because I plan to gut that entire cabinet out. But having some control at this stage is good for sort of debugging, figuring out what's up with the machine. But like I said, most of it seems to work. The hydraulics are working, spindle direction, coolant pump doesn't seem to work. The power draw bar seems okay. It's got apparently some sort of spindle break. This also works. And it's got what I think are lockouts for X, Y, and Z. This up here is the motion control, feed rates, rapids, spindle speed override, it looks like. But I haven't been able to get any of that to work. The controller even worked. 
the screen came on. I got CNC-ish menus in German. I mean, it worked in that I was getting DRO feedback on the screen when I moved the machine handles around. Unfortunately, however, that didn't last long. 15 minutes into trying to figure out how to change the language on the controller, I heard a pop and this power brick started spitting out a lot of smoke. Boy, did that ever smell good. It was sitting in the bottom. I dug it out. It's still sort of wet. I should have really checked before I did all of this. This doesn't appear to be OEM to me, and I'm sure if I found an equivalent power brick, I could power that thing back on, but I'm not going to burn too much time with that old controller. And I don't think that should stop me from being able to power feed the axes on this machine. And this is where most of the mechanical clockwork lives. It's got a hydraulic unit at the top, a single motor, I think, that runs X, Y, and Z axis, and an automatic oiler at the bottom. I was very excited to find an automatic oiler in this thing that both worked and still had oil in it. I haven't looked into it, but I'm willing to bet just this system alone is worth what I paid for the whole pile of junk here. This is run by a timer in this control cabinet. Every time the machine gets a power interrupt, like when you first turned it on, for example, it runs for about 10 seconds or so. Also, anytime you do a reset from the control panel, like if you hit the E stop, the machine will stop, but the oiler comes to life. Again, 5, 10, 15 seconds or so. I'm willing to bet this is the reason the machine still feels so good today. It takes the human element out of a very important maintenance task for a machine tool, which is kind of sad in a way. This is the hydraulic power plant. It's got four solenoid valves, a tank, and inside the tank is a, I guess, a small hydraulic pump. This was the thing that was making all the racket when I turned on the hydraulics. I'm not sure why, bad pump maybe, or might just be low on hydraulic oil. But when I first saw this, when I took this cover off and saw that this was here, it scared the poop out of me. At first, I was worried that this was hydraulic motion control. I mean, I don't know if that's a thing on mills. I know this kind of stuff exists on surface grinders, for example. But if the hydraulics were integral to the motion control of the machine, my whole conversion plan would have been shot. So when it turned out to not be that, I got all excited that maybe this made the machine jump up and down when I put on some sick beats. Unfortunately, it doesn't do that either. One of these lines, the top line, goes to the power drawbar. But whatever clamping system in there is hydraulically powered, obviously. These other three took a minute for me to figure out, but it looks like they're lockouts for each axis, X, Y, and Z. So I guess when this thing was doing C and C and running just one axis at a time, it would lock out the other two. And trust me, when I say lock out, I mean really lock out. When these things are on, energized, those axes just will not budge. Undecided what to do with this. I don't need the axis lockouts anymore, but keeping the power drawbar hydraulics would save me a lot of trouble. If I can quiet this thing down, I'll keep it there. Just omit these other lines. Otherwise, I'll try to go to pneumatic. Add an air cylinder at the top and see if I can use that to actuate the power drawbar. The other downside of this is it's slow. Tool changes would probably be like a minute. And that oh-so-dapper-looking baby blue pancake motor that you see, I think that's what moves the axes. You can make it out down there, it's geared up, there's a timing belt, and a large pulley at the bottom that goes into the base of the machine. On the right at the bottom, that's the coolant pump, you can ignore that. And that open electrical box at the top is some kind of electromechanical pressure control for the hydraulic system. This motor being here is the real bummer. I was hoping each axis would have its own, just again, so my conversion would be easier. Now, I don't know for sure, just an educated guess, I assume that motor probably runs all the time, and then the hydraulics above it, based on commands sent from the control panel, actuate some sort of system of clutches and locks that send that power to the axis that you're trying to move, or that the controller wants to move based on the G-code. It's not super elegant, but I suppose it worked. Again, this thing has glass scales, a DRO on each axis, so the controller can keep track of, you know, where your part and your tool are, where the machine is going. I don't know why that motor won't power up, says the guy who gutted the largest component out of the control panel. Maybe it's the motor, maybe it's the relay, maybe it's some combination of the controls. I don't know what I'm doing at that control panel. But again, I'm not too worried about it. All this stuff will go away. I'm going to start to dig into the base, take this machine apart, see where I can start fitting my own steppers and servos. So that's it. Maybe not my most exciting video, but just thought I'd do a quick share. Don't expect to see results on this soon. It's going to take me quite some time to tear it down, clean it up, get rid of all that old robot pee smell, gut out what I don't need, etc. Definitely a winter-long project. 
if all goes well. But with any luck, with another couple of grand and some work, I might end up with a decent CNC mill. It certainly won't be the fastest phrase machina on YouTube, but it'll be my phrase machina. Thanks for watching.